Hey everybody, welcome. It's Ed here. Oh, and let's turn that off so we don't uh, get an echo. There we are. Welcome everybody to Ed Day Alive, the opportunity where you've got a chance to uh, ask me anything. Um, and also we've got to today, it's a big show. We are going to go over, I think, what is one of the most important parts and frankly not focused on and uh you know, just not implemented well enough uh, in terms of collecting emails, building a list. We're going to talk about that, and we're going to do that in a pretty unique way. So, uh, crossing fingers, all the technology works. Um, and of course, you know, if you want to ask a question, you can go to live.eddale.co, and you can do that at any time uh, during the week. The page is always open, so you can leave a question. If you can't make the uh, live show itself, uh, then you can always do that, of course. Um, at any time during the show, you can ask a question as well, and love to get your feedback. Uh, thank uh, a shout out actually to Paul Pascal. I hope you're feeling better. Uh, he was one who left some feedback during the week, so uh, hope you're well, Paul. And uh, thanks for watching. Of course, you can also uh, get access to this live broadcast if you're listening to this. You are probably listening to the podcast version of uh, this broadcast, which comes out uh, each week. And that's uh, it's very exciting to hear so many people are now getting access to the podcast. And if you want to listen to the podcast, all you need to do is just open your favorite podcast client and search for Ed Dale Live. You can do that. As always, uh, we're brought to you by The Challenge and the uh, challenge is available right now at challenge.co. And indeed, uh, the topic of today's discussion, uh, building your first funnel, is covered for free, for nothing, inside of the challenge at challenge.co. Uh, so that is there and is available to you. Because you know when we think about creating a funnel we often think oh well it's a relatively easy thing and it's a you know it's a, not a, exactly rocket science but actually when you break it down this is something I do in my live workshops it's actually a relatively complex situation and particularly for those of you who are new or indeed you know a lot of businesses have been online for ages and don't collect email it happens all the time i know magcasters and scriptcasters who don't collect email and when when you consider that building your list is the you know, the it, it's absolutely the must for being if you call yourself an online business you've got to be able to collect a list right you've got to be able to build that list why well when you're looking at designing products this is the way to let people know about those products. This is the way to let people know about live broadcasts like this one. This is the way to let people know about new content, your tribe members. To have somebody as your tribe member, it's a way of making sure that you can stay in touch and you can communicate. Now, I would say at some point in the future, I think push notifications, text messages for apps and messaging will take over from email. But let me tell you right now, that's not today and it's not 12 months, uh, probably not even two years. The history of uh, direct marketing always follows, the, the, the communication methodology always follows how you speak to your best friends. Okay, it always follows. But there is a lag, there's always, and a significant lag. And so messaging and text messaging and uh, push notifications and apps and all those sorts of things, they will definitely uh, you know, replace email at some point, but it's not going to be any time soon. So to communicate, and as something that is uh, that we can utilize to sell and to make money and to communicate, nothing beats email, just the facts. I wish it were different, but it's not. Email is the way to go. So it's absolutely crucial. So with that, I'm going to use a methodology called user story mapping. And this is something I do in uh, live workshops and often with private clients for all sorts of different topics. But it works particularly well for looking at the opt-in process. And the way we do that is we look at the opt-in process from the user's point of view. So let's go to the uh, iPad Pro here. Okay, so 
for a start, we're looking at our, you know, we want to attract our user. So we need to figure out some sort of attention getter, right? So we need an attention getter. We need to figure out, okay, well, somehow they need to be attracted to tension something for our funnel. So we want to figure what our, what is that. So we've got some sort of attention getter and then from the attention getter they click into our opt-in page so we've got you know you know the type of page an opt-in page we've all seen them you know you'll there'll be some text here and then there'll be a like a place for a name and a place for an email now of course once somebody uh, enters in this name and email that email address needs to go somewhere, right? Where's it being stored? Where's that information being stored? So we don't know. So we need to figure that out. So where is the email stored? Then we've offered some sort of product in return for their email. People won't give you their email out of their own, own heart anymore. So we've got our product, something that we're offering in return for the email, some sort of, we want to have lots of value, provides lots of value and addresses their biggest pain point. That's what we need to look at. I'm doing that in red because that's crucial. We'll come back to that later on. So we need a way of delivering that. We need to figure that out. We then need to have some sort of way of sending that to them. So let's have a look here at our group. So let's just bring this along. Okay, and move that here. And let's, so this is our user story. Let's, let's rename that. Okay, there we have it. Now, our first uh, line here is our attention getter. So what are the things that we need to think about with when it comes to an attention getter? So let's just do some, let's create some post-it notes and this is how I would typically do it live as well. So um, for, we've got to uh, place an attention getter where our tribe will be. So we need to figure out where is our tribe. So we need to figure that out. Now, assuming that um, I didn't want to add that to group A. Oh, no, that's good. That's good. Let's keep going. Uh, so where's our tribe? Uh, what else do we need to do? We need to create some sort of uh, attention-getting device. Is that an ad? Right? We need to create some sort of ad appropriate to that. So uh, we need to create some form of ad. So again, just by using these prompts, we start to figure out, okay, where where is this useful? Okay, so we need to also think about, uh, what else do we need to think about when it comes to finding the tribe? So where they're at, we need some sort of attention-getting ad. We need to understand pains, gains, and jobs to be done. We absolutely need that as well. Because without understanding the pains, gains, and jobs to be done, how can we create something of value to be able to provide people in return for their email address? They're not going to just give us the email address out of their own excitement. So here, let's uh, bring that down. And so this is our attention getter. So let's rename group attention. So when I, if I was doing this on a live whiteboard, what I would be doing is I would be creating a little rose underneath each. And these are sort of like our action uh, points. So we've somehow got the attention getter. And now we've, our people have arrived at the opt-in page. So what do we need to know about uh, the opt-in page, for example? So for a start... Uh, where is the opt-in page going to be hosted? So that's a, you know, that's an obvious one. What service are we going to use? We don't know, right? I'm assuming you don't know. Where is the opt-in page 
hosted. Okay, if we figure that out, then uh, we need a headline. Because all opt-in pages have a headline. We also need some sort of image for our opt-in page. We need... Um, uh, we need the code to collect the email, which is usually provided by your autoresponder service. So we've got our code to collect email. And then, of course, I mentioned autoresponder service. Do we have an autoresponder service? Like a MailChimp or a, uh, you know, a Weber. Um, so what do we got here? Auto, let's call this autoresponder. So we've got uh, autoresponder, question mark. <laughs> Please don't be put off by my incredible uh, image skills here because, uh, you know, anybody can do this. I'm just particularly gifted when it comes to creating, uh, creating this. And by the way, uh, if you're listening to this on the podcast, I'll actually produce some amazing part of this particular app, I'll produce a PDF that you'll be able to download at my blog. That'll be later in the week, um, just so that you've got that. So we've got to figure out our autoresponder. So we, we collect our thing. Now, most importantly, we need to come up with um, some sort of offering. What are we going to offer in return for the email? What are we going to use? What are we going to create? What are we going to give away? Fortunately, we know that what that needs to be is something that addresses the biggest pain point. Right, that's absolutely crucial. And this is, a, a, I'm going to do a section after this where I talk about the biggest mistakes people make in this entire process. And right there is one of the absolute keys. So we've got our offer. Uh, what else do we need to, so we need to, that's probably enough for the moment. So let's have a look here. So let's bring those down and then we can drag this up and make those available there. So we basically align each of these sections underneath the appropriate post-it note. So we do that as well. Okay, so we've got our email stored. We know what that's going to be because that's we've already done that is going to be a function of the autoresponder service. And then we've got to create our product. So that's the next part of this. So let's have a look at our product. Now, when I say product, what I'm talking about is a giveaway, something, and it could be a recording, it could be a PDF, it could be a, um, it could be a live webinar that you're doing. It could be anything. But here's what it's got to be. It's got to address the biggest pain point. Okay, whatever your market is, it's got to address the absolute number one biggest pain point of your market, whatever that is. Now, some of you might be thinking here, hang on, Ed, if this funnel, if this opt-in page is going to address the biggest pain point in our market, why would they ever want to buy anything from me? Well, here's the deal. In most cases, in fact, in, in all cases, if somebody is going to be buying from you, if somebody's going to be buying from you, let's, it's that classic physics. It's not physics, but hey. Person A, person B, right? If the product, the service, the, the cost, everything is the same, right? If everything is the same, then guess what? Are you going to go with buy from somebody you've never ever heard of or somebody that helped you out at some point, got you a report that was highly valuable? By the way, you don't have to, you know, I, I am in no way should be whatever this giveaway is, in no way should you be pulling your punches in this. This is, yeah, this is again what my mentor Gary Halbert taught me. Um, and it's, you know, look at the challenge challenge.co you go there you download that people tell me that they've paid two thousand dollars for courses that don't have as much value as as challenge.co which you get for absolutely for free and it's true we designed it because my mentor gary halbert 
told me, you cannot give away enough stuff. You cannot provide enough value to your market. And that was in the day and age where the paths to market were incredibly restricted. Now, when we're competing for attention amongst everybody else on the planet, we have to be able to, boom, help people and narrow in on exactly the area that they need help in. Because here's the thing. If you help or point somebody in the right direction, you may not solve the pain point for them, but maybe you've got five tips that will you know, show them where they need to go to figure out this stuff. Or you, know, you save them time or you do anything of real, genuine value. That's the only hope you've got of getting somebody's email because people are resident to give email because they're so sick of getting spam and all of these sorts of things, right? Makes sense. So our giveaway, our little item of value is absolutely crucial. And it should in my, you know, and say, Ed, but hang on, I'm in a happy market like golf or something like that. You know, people enjoy doing it. Um, What's the pain point? Well, the pain point there is, for example, if you are addressing a uh, somebody who's got putting problems and you've got a new technique which could potentially solve a putting problem, then I'm going to hand over my email faster than you can say Father Christmas because I suffer from this particular putting problem. Even though I enjoy playing golf, I need to improve my putting. So this is why understanding pains, gains and jobs to be done is so, so important. So you can see from there, let's just go back to my iPad for a second. You know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight post-it notes, nine post-it notes of stuff that we need to do when we put together an opt-in funnel. So it's not super simple necessarily at all. Um, I was helping some client with some, uh, you know, what technology are we going to use here? Have we got the autoresponder? All of those sorts of things. Now, I should point out that in the challenge, challenge challenge.co, we take you through this entire process. Now, you'll have to do it yourself, and we suggest some tools and all that sort of thing, but we do that, right? It's available there for you. you know, So you will be able to put together this process, and there's a guide and why it's so important. We talk about that in the challenge. Okay, so the next thing I want to do here is I want to change tax a little bit. We've talked about, okay, so what is the opt-in uh, process. Now what I want to do on uh, here is take you through a uh, presentation that I created just before. It's only a couple of slides. Um, but it goes to the biggest issues and the biggest problems people have with list building. Right, so these are and these are mistakes that veterans make when it comes to list building. In fact, you know, a core part of our private client service is you know we're about to actually do a a new service where I'm so sick. I've got to say, I'm so sick of um, people stuffing this up, stuffing up list building. It's so vital. If you've got a list of people who are excited for your product, you can do experiments. You can reach out. You can figure out what their pain points are. You can ask your market. You've got so many, so many options, yet people don't do it and they don't list build. Getting that email is just absolutely vital. You don't have a business if you don't have that email. And so what I want to talk about in my newly created series here, Biggest Mistakes series, I want to talk about the biggest mistakes people make in list building. And the first thing that they do is they try to go too broad. They don't use a single tight target market. So what do I mean by this? So I mentioned golf before. Now, if I'm trying to create an opt-in page that's something that will attract all golfers, um, well, I'm going to have to be super broad. But remember, my problem with golf was putting. So if I am, you know, taking, say, an ad out on a series of YouTube videos where people show how to solve putting problems, 
Wouldn't it make sense to send them to an opt-in page which is purely designed around here are six techniques you can use to improve your putting the next time you go out? As opposed to just trying to say, hey, improve your golf. Which one are you more likely to opt into that you want to be a part of? Which one speaks to you more directly? And this to me, this not address, because what's the cost of an opt-in page? You know, we use Market Pro Max, for example. And that means that literally in seconds, I can have a world-class, fully tested opt-in page up and running in a second. Literally. Just a click of a button and it's done. So it doesn't make any sense to try have these catch-all opt-in pages where you've got one page and you're trying to direct all sorts of different traffic into that opt-in page. People make this mistake all the time. In an ideal world, in an ideal world, you know, down the track, you potentially have hundreds of opt-in pages, all micro-targeted to the specific pain points of the specific little single target markets inside your big market. So for somebody with putting problems, there's a report to solve putting. For somebody who's got driving problems, there's a report to solve driving. And again, people think, oh, Ed, how much work is that? You know, and this is why we're doing this done for you service, because honestly, once you understand how it's actually done and you learn the right processes, you can do it so much more easily because it doesn't have to be we're not talking 120 page reports here think about it if you get your problem solved like if it solves a problem that you've just had for ages do you care whether that was one five minute video or isn't it worthy enough like you actually want you know 30 videos of an hour each to feel like you know it, you put in the effort to solve your problem or do you just want to solve your problem you just want to solve your problem. And here's the problem. <laughs> well, I'm saying problem a hell of a lot. To figure out pains, gains, and jobs to be done, to make the most effective opt-in page, one that, you know, where you're getting 50 to 75% of people opting in, you have to hit them right between the eyes, solving their biggest pain. And here's the problem. If I go broad, if I go to the market that is golf, there's millions of pain points. There's no one particular pain point in golf. There's stacks. Which one do I do? I don't know. It's a crapshoot. And then I'm spending massive amounts of money. And, you know, hands up. Who's got 100 grand to spend on, um, you know, their ads each month? If you do, call me. Most of us don't. Our superpower, our advantage is to be able to speak very directly to our market. This is how using a thousand true fans and we can, without having to outspend all the big corporates and all the, you know, the massive people who are buying stacks and stacks of traffic, you know, and paying $20, $30 a keyword on Google, this is how we beat them. We beat them because we understand the pains, gains, and jobs to be done, and we go small. Because here's the thing, once you've done one for the putting market, you can do one for the driving market. You know, the first classic example of this, of course, was Frank Kern's dog training uh, approach, which he did, which is over for a decade now. But you know, and it seems stupid now, but at the time it was revolutionary. So rather than offering one product, which was on, you know, how to train your dog, it was simply, his distinction was, he would create an individual page, an individual opt-in about how to train your Chihuahua, how to train your Sheltie, how to train your Doberman. You see where I'm going. Now, of course, the content of the report, the vast majority of the content of the report was exactly the same, because how you train a dog is how you train a dog. But again, if I've got a Shetland Sheepdog and I want to train a Shetland Sheepdog and I've got the choices of two products, one that is how to train your dog and one is how to train your Shetland Sheepdog with a photo of the Shetland Sheepdog, what are you going to do? It's obvious. Yeah, it seems obvious, but that is the massive mistake people are making with their opt-in pages. They're trying to be too broad. They're not focusing down on a single target market. And one of the reasons is, is fear and laziness. Fear that it's going to take all this effort and energy. But the reality is, once you've got the formula in place, this is something that you can get pay somebody 10 bucks an hour to create 15 opt-in pages an hour. You know, it's not 
a big deal, right? It's easy. It's There's never been a better time to be able to do this. The technology is there. The systems are there. The services are there. It's all about you understanding that particular market. So that's our first mistake that people make. Too broad, not a tight single target market. The next thing is the opt-in pages aren't focused. We're so desperate to try and get everybody, we end up getting nobody because we're not focused enough. And this is, I've said this a number of times already, and let me just again super emphasize it. The single biggest pain point. That is what your opt-in for your particular, so we've narrowed down our market. Instead of going golfers, we're going for people who have problems putting. So now that we've got people, we know that people have problems putting, we can go straight to that pain point. So we know, you know, people want to stop three putting, you know, learn this crazy technique. And it doesn't even have to be, you know, think smart about this. You know, maybe you've discovered a technique that worked really well for you and you watched a YouTube video. You get exactly the same credo and you build your email list by referring to, here are four techniques that worked really well for me. Did you create the techniques? That's a single PDF with four links to four YouTube videos. Do people think, oh, I just got ripped off? Or are they excited to try these techniques and fix their putting? You don't have to build them. You can just point people into the right place because I, you know, as I want to ram through everybody's skulls, we don't have time. There's so much awesome stuff now on the internet. If you can save me time by pointing me to something which is absolutely fantastic, right? It's a, it's it's just solves my issue immediately. You are going to get all the credibility of that, right? You are going to get all the power of that. You don't have to come up with the concept. You just point me in the right spot. And never, ever, ever, of course, should you try to represent other people's stuff as your own. Don't do it. Give people credit. I do it all the time. I mentioned, uh, you know, fantastic new product, uh, po- product podcast from uh, Dean Jackson. You know, more cheese, less whiskers. I use his stuff all the time, and I point out that I use his stuff all the time. You know, because I, it's not about whether you came up with it or not, but by bringing it to somebody's attention, you can be way more effective. Technology stuff-ups is our third problem. And this is a huge deal for a lot of you listening to this right now, right? The autoresponder, the, uh, what else have we got? We've got the autoresponder. We've got, you know, the getting the opt-in pages sorted out, linking the code between the autoresponder and uh, the opt-in page itself, you know, embedding those pages in the right websites or putting them in your Magcast or Scrivcast all of those things, right, are, are potential pain points for people, particularly when you're setting up your first uh, your, your first uh, funnels. Now, interestingly, and as I say, we're about to come out with this uh, very, very shortly, maybe actually by the time you're listening to this, is that we're going to do, for people who just don't have the time but want us to design the funnel, we're actually going to build the entire funnel and provide all the technology for you uh, because we use our own stuff. So... It's a bit hard for me to say, hey, go grab this piece of technology or go grab this because, you know, we use our own stuff. So we thought, well, hey, let's just do it for people. Um, But again, completely understand where that is a particular issue. And of course, if the technology, if you get the stuff up with the technology, then of course nothing happens and you're not collecting those emails and we're not getting anywhere. The next thing that really, really stuffs people up is no stats, no measurement. They, uh, they, they don't measure, they don't figure it out, and that is a huge deal. So there are no stats um, if they're not measuring, if they're not collecting, that is a real big issue. Um, because if you're not measuring it, how can you manage it? How can you make it work? Right? There's no way that you can do this. And a lot of people set up opt-in pages and because they're afraid of the results, they don't check the results. They don't check the stats. They don't check the measurements. You know, it's huge, right? This is such a big problem. So it's not measuring your opt-in funnels and understanding what your conversion rates are, how many people view the page versus how many opt people opt in, 
That is crazy. That is absolutely insane. Our final point here is no focus. And what I mean by no focus here is that, honestly, people will work on any other part of their business than fix up their collection of emails. I see it time and time again. And I see this with big businesses that have you know been there for a while. I've seen this with Magcast with tens and tens of thousands of subscribers, and they just haven't collected emails at all, right? They because they just haven't even focused on it, and that is often the you know the absolute standard place where we're at. It's you know they just don't focus on the collection of email. You know, getting email. You know, there's I can't make this any clearer that is your job as somebody who's involved in marketing your job is to collect emails yeah because that is the single best most valuable way of talking to people and getting their availability right it's just the way it is so that is just absolutely crucial so with that those are the things that uh, I think are absolutely the most important when it comes to creating a funnel and figuring out how you do that. You've got to do it, right? And again, we if you people are sort of going, hey, opt-in, what are you talking about? Please go to challenge.co and enroll yourself in the challenge. It's completely free and you can understand what an opt-in is, what a funnel is, and how to go about designing one. And if you're interested in us doing it for you, stay tuned because we'll be uh, shooting out an email over the next couple of days uh, because we've created a new service to actually build it for you. And literally, I work with you to build it um, and design it, figure out what the pains, gains, jobs to be done are, design the product, the whole deal. So that's that's part of what we're doing. Okay, so let's have a look at some, uh, we've got some questions uh, here. And now we've got, uh, Charmaine says, how can I get email addresses of people who buy my book on Amazon? If I send them to an opt-in page, there's no reason for them to give me an email just for me to give them a link to buying my book on Amazon. Okay. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. Uh, First of all, if you've got a book already on Amazon, you need to make sure that there are many ways of reminding people that you have more information available. So you should have checklists. You should have, you know, to-dos, video guides. It depends on your topic, of course, but anything that you can send people to, which they then get access for an email, is absolutely crucial in you know you know in having a book on Amazon. You know you'll get traffic from Amazon, so make sure that your your ebook, which of course you can't collect emails from directly, you have to send them somewhere. Now on the other side of it, um, you absolutely can collect an email and have a free link. I see this all the time. So you do advertising, right? We use our attention getter and you go to an opt-in page and you have the, hey, get access to my new book on putting. It's it's fantastic. Uh, Just pop your email in here and I will send you a link to get access to it. And then what I do on that email is I send them a link and I put in the Kindle link and I put in the iBooks link. Right, so that they can choose which one, or if they want to download of a PDF, I'll put a PDF link. So actually, you're enhancing the service by putting an opt-in page in front of the book from Amazon. Because when you're paying, when you're paying for attention, it is a crime not to collect email. Right, and often you know people really appreciate. I know I do, and I see this happen all the time. This is not just me thinking about it. I did it the other day, in fact. Um, people appreciate. I love getting the option of clicking a, a Kindle link on an email where I've just opted into something. And guess what? Then you can provide additional services. You can say, hey, have you checked out chapter three? It's got a fantastic new technique on lining up your parts and reading greens, etc., etc., etc. So that, to me, Charmaine, is what I would do uh, when you've got an Amazon book. Because 
putting an Amazon book in there just by itself. We do the same thing when it comes to apps. In fact, if you want an example of this process, oh, why didn't I think of this? Let me show you. <laughs> right there, Achiever. Now, if you go to achiever.co, now, if you're listening to this on the podcast, we've spelled, don't do this, this is stupid, but we've done it because we were thought it'd be funny because it's all hipster, uh, but it's terrible if you're listening to it. It's Achiever without the E at the uh, end. So it's A-C-H-I-E-V-R dot co. No E there, just the V-R. So Achiever.co. Now, Charmaine, this, would, this process would work exactly the same for your book as it does uh, for our software app. And it's a really cool uh, habits tracking app if you haven't used utilized it it's absolutely free but more importantly i want you to see how we do the opt-in and then how we provide the service because here's the thing if i just sent a link out just to the iphone what if you've got a samsung right that doesn't help so this way we can collect an email and we can guide people to the correct device and we can send give them both options while collecting an email because we know that it's ridiculous to put out any sort of digital media whatsoever without providing people an opportunity to sign up to your list. Because otherwise you're just building Facebook for Facebook or you're just building Twitter for Twitter or you're building Periscope for Periscope or Facebook Live for Facebook Live. You know, it may be all great for your ego and, you know, I, I meet with people all the time. Oh, I've got thousands of likes on my Facebook page. Big whoops. If you can't email them, if you can't communicate directly to your audience, because, of course, that was the great joke years ago, and I warned people about this years ago. People were buying traffic to build up the likes on their Facebook page. And then what did Facebook do? Turn around and say, oh, oh, you want to display, uh, you want everybody to see this message? Well, you're going to have to pay us, <laughs> right? And you, you don't think they're going to do that with Facebook Live? <laughs> you're joking, aren't you? Of course they are. So that is uh, going to be the case. Um, oh, a couple of people have asked me about the um, uh, the uh, the app that I that was Post It Note Plus was the uh, app that that I used. Okay, let's get going. Uh, Pratik asks, I'm having a hard time getting started because I know that I need a website but I want to make sure that I'm hiring the right person at the right price to create a website that is appropriate for my specific business. How should I go about this? The, <laughs> the words hiring and first website just shouldn't be in the same sentence because there are plenty of options for you to be able to start something for free and you should only spend your money once you have actually... Um, you know, you're at the point where you're you know, collecting thousands of emails and all that sort of So again, challenge.co. That's where you need to go. That's what you need to do. Work through that course. We'll show you all of the things that you need to do and show you how easy it is using free or virtually free sources to be able to get started. Because you don't need a website. You need an opt-in page, right? That's what you need first up. You don't even need a website. Websites are going out with neck to knee lead gumboots. Who goes to websites anymore? Right? Not Joe and Jane Smith. Not 90% of people. They don't physically go to an, a website. They get directed to a page on a website from their social media or from email, but they don't go to people just don't go to websites anymore. You might, but real people don't. Um, Elizabeth says. I'm a little stuck on whether or not uh, my idea for a product will actually help people and they'll actually pay for it. For example, I want to create an online workshop about writing, communication and influence, but I don't know if somebody will pay $3,000 for that. They could just hire a writer. Well, how do you figure that out? For one of the things that you ask yourself, of course, is are there anybody, is there anybody providing uh, courses for that side of writing and communication and are they charging that sort of amount of money? Uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> uh, the answer is yes, they do, right? I, I know for a fact it's an area that I'm very interested in myself. So the answer is absolutely yes, 
And how do I know that? Research. Well, now, let's say, okay, let's take two steps back. What if I didn't know? How would I figure it out? Well, I would create myself a little post-it note saying spend 25 minutes Googling online writing courses and seeing what comes up. You know, I'll give myself a time limit for 25 minutes and see what courses I can find. And I'm tipping you'll find stacks of them because it's a, a very vibrant market. Uh, people love going to writing courses. And there's residencies, there's camps, there's all sorts of things online, all sorts of stuff. Um, why do people pay when they could hire somebody else? One is they want to do it themselves. They want to write their own stuff. Um, you're saving them time. You're showing them a better, smarter way to do things. You're addressing their pains, gains, and jobs to be done. So that is how I would do it. I would figure out, okay, what's my niche? And I'd Google search it for 25 minutes and say, hey, what courses are there? What's out there? You know? In fact, you know, if you can't find any at all in your particular market and you've given it, you know, you've probably, no, sorry, properly researched it, then that's a bit of a yellow flag, actually. Are, do people want to pay for that particular type of delivery in that particular market? Maybe they don't. Maybe they do other things. Right? So it's, okay, what do they do? Because remember, every market is a market. Um, okay, Max says here, uh, weekly podcast plus syndicated transcript, best platform. Well, we use uh, we use Market Pro Max is what we use, and we use uh, think ser transcript services like Rev. Um, I'm not a big fan of podcast transcripts, I've got to say, because frankly, if you read back most podcast transcripts, they sound terrible. I know mine do. When you're communicating in a, in vision and audio, your brain is able to fill in the, the gaps. When you're reading something, that's another issue. But you can use those, and typically people are paying, I think it's a, the going rate tends to be about a dollar a minute for decent transcription, right? So if you've got 60 minutes, you'll pay about $60 for, for that. There is no integrated service that I'm aware of that does that, but most blog platforms will obviously host your podcast. Like I say, we use, you know, we basically built something from the ground up uh, to work for ourselves and our private clients because we wanted to make it super duper easy. So I can record this and then there's an automatic series of processes that happens and, and part of the team breaks down, creates the podcast, does all of those sorts of things as part of that process. Um, how much should you spend, James asks, on a campaign before dumping it or scaling it? Well, that's a great question. And I think the, the key thing that you need to, to ask yourself is, well, am I getting a return on investment or not? Biggest single mistake I think uh, people make here, James, is that they try to chase a winner and they spend a lot more money than they need to, uh, hoping that things will turn around. The rule of thumb, and look, the, the uh, what is it, the Black-Scholes options formula. If you want to go and to do a year of commerce at university and learn that formula, it will tell you the number of actions or the number of um, things, events that need to happen before you can have a relatively solid idea that something is going to happen. Let me shortcut that all for you. Basically, you need about a thousand. So for an opt-in page, for me to get a really good understanding of whether an opt-in page, what its actual percentage is, what its conversion percentage is, how many people are going to opt in. You look for about, uh, it depends on the, if it's, let okay, step back, step back for one second. If we're talking about a sales page, typically a sales page will be 1% to 2%. So you really want, before you can really lock that conversion in, you need about a 1,000 people to view the page for you to understand what the actual conversion rate is because it's going to be about one or two. Now, if an opt-in page where you're aiming for somewhere between 30 and 75%, you need a lot less views. So you only need, you know, 100 or so to determine whether 
that opt-in page is working the way you want it. So it depends. There's, there's a, as I say, there's a mathematical formula behind this, but approximately, you know, the higher the percentage likelihood of something happening, for example, if you create an opt-in page, I want to see 50% opt-ins. That's where I'd like to see it. So you can tell very quickly, you know, between 50 and 100 views, whether you're hitting that mark. Whereas if you've got a sales page, you'll need a lot more. Or if you've got an opt-in on a blog post, for example, where typical opt-in rates on a blog post are maybe a couple of percent, if that. You need a thousand views to see if it's going to be worthwhile. So that's a couple of uh, rule of thumbs. Okay, so let's have a look. Greg's um, asking, I'm contemplating going to a niche-related show for my magazine. The Magcast is Online Sellers News, and the the trade show is ASD Market Week. Oh, okay, so it's got a trade show. Approximately 28,000 attendees, 2,149 vendors. That's a big show. I was thinking of doing Facebook Live and interviewing some other e-commerce sellers that I know that have been successful selling Amazon, eBay, and Shopify. That's what my magazine's about. I'm also working on a Snapchat filter for the event. Any input would be most appreciated. Um, well, I think going to trade shows is one of the absolute secret weapons of if you want to understand pains gains and jobs to be done in your market you're a magcaster who wants to get advertisers review products and so on for your magcast going to a trade show is one of the best things that you can possibly do in any niche <coughs> pardon me the reason the reason is because um you know People are there basically. Usually, you've got people who are very high up in the organization and they're at a trade show for two, three, four, five days and they're actually desperate to have a decent conversation with somebody. And being able to walk up, interview, do a Facebook Live, you know, the key thing here's the trick, here's the super trick, right? This is gold, what I'm about to tell you. The mistake people make at trade shows is they go up. And they try to pitch the person on how am I going to help you, right? Or please buy ads for my Magcast or please give me stuff, right? It's all, they approach the stand and it's all about them, right? You want to be, here's the trick. How can I help you? Hi, I'm Ed Dale from Blah Blah Magcast. Um, I'd love to tell our readers about your new widget. Um, could we talk about that? Maybe if you wouldn't mind, could we video this on Facebook Live so I can send it out direct to my, or can I record it for my podcast? You know, people love that because they're there at the show and you're giving them something to do. Otherwise, they're just going out of their mind with boredom. And then you can repurpose that. That could potentially become an article for the for the Madcast. And then you make contact. You've got their card. And you send them, hey, look, we covered uh, that particular widget in this issue. Check it out. And then who knows? Maybe you start getting review products. Maybe people will say, hey, how can I participate? How can I get involved? All of these are possibilities, right? All of them are possibilities. So I think a trade show, Greg, is brilliant. It's a wonderful way to do it. Um, and also, I actually did this. I think it's on my YouTube channel. But, you know, other th you know, trade shows publish all the people that are going to be there well ahead of time. So you can plan your targets. So you should research. Are they on Twitter? Are they, you know, do your homework? Who do you want to speak to? All those sorts of things. But don't, as I say, when you're approaching people, it's from a position of serving. How can I help you? You do that and you'll do incredibly well out of the trade show. You won't have to ask. People will ask you. But it's all about you giving. That's absolutely key. Um, let's have a look. What else have we got here? Charmaine says... What could be some examples of attention getters for Facebook Live to grab their attention within the first 10 seconds? Wrong question. Look, this may be controversial, but as an attention getter, in turn, if you just want people to open that particular video for a live thing, good luck, right? You've got, there's virtually nothing 
that you can do uh, that is not incredibly corny. Like, do you see those videos? You know, here, 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 I'm, I'm going to do a attention-getting reenactment. You and I apologise for the podcast listeners because you. I'll describe what I'm doing in a second. There's a couple of videos I'm seeing which are things like this. Yeah, this is the the reenactment part of the show. For those of you who are not live, I was basically waving at the camera or acting out and using big lip reading. Stop. Watch my video. Please. Please clap. How needy. How horrific. Right? You know, Facebook Live video. I, do, I use Facebook Live all the time, actually. I love it for my Facebook groups uh, that I'm involved in. You know, Digital Success Elite and Achieve a Formula and so on because it's a great way of sending information. But I'm not assuming anybody's watching live. If we're talking attention getter in the context of how we were talking today as an opt-in, they, you know, people, you have to provide value before you ask for the opt-in. The trick is, of course, if you can, um, in the, you know, give them a reason in the video, you know, you should point out in each video where they can get more information. Or look, if you want more help on this, shoot me an email or sign up for my email here. You'll see, you might have seen this, you know, what do we do? You know, we put up Ed Dale Live. <laughs> you know, we say, hey, why do we have this on our own page instead of on Facebook Live or on YouTube? We do show it on all of those channels, but we send people to my page. Why? Because I'm in control of it. It's very shortly, Facebook will start charging you for that, uh, you know, that the privilege of sending live video out to your page viewers. So we want people to be, you know, to be there and to be available. When you are, um, if you're just creating videos for live channels or for YouTube channel and, and so on, doing screens like attention, and uh, you know, attention getting screens. Uh, have I got one here? I'm not sure if I've got one here. Uh, I don't think, yeah, but, you know, if if you've got some sort of attention graphic which you can upload, which can be the graphic, instead of just you as the same one, and I'm actually talking to myself here, this is something that you can utilize, right? You can you can use that as 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 an example. They will be some of the things that uh, that I would use and and I would do. Okay, so who else have we got here? Len asks. G'day, Len. Um, hi, Ed. Speaking of Achiever Formula. Uh, analytics. Can you speak a little bit further about analytics? I know how much you love these, Len. We all know we need them. Everybody says we should track our responses, but there never seems to be anyone talking about the first two or three things we should be measuring. And from there, what other metrics should we be eventually including? Well, let me keep this really simple, and this will disappoint you, Len. Typically, for most businesses, there is only one metric at any particular time in their life cycle that they really should be focusing on. In the context of today, it's how many email addresses I'm collecting and how many people have viewed my opt-in page and what is the conversion rate, right? So what is the conversion opt-in rate for that particular page, for example? And if I'm building a list, I'll tell you, our key metric, John puts a report out each week, right? He updates a document and shares it around. Our metric is how many email addresses did we collect this week? That is our core here at, uh, you know, Dale Bass Enterprises. It is, that is our key metric. How many emails did we collect this email? Because we know that from there, those emails are worth X dollars per email to us. So that is our key metric. And that's the thing that we focus on the absolute most. Most businesses have that. So for a start, you know, when you create an opt-in page, it's probably getting people, how many people actually saw your opt-in page? How many people did you get to your opt-in page is going to be crucial. Then as you're selling products and services, maybe you're going through uh, testing out pages for a potential launch, then maybe it's the conversion rate. But I think people often, you know, they measure so much that they end up measuring nothing or they don't ask themselves what's important for that stage of the business. So, so the answer is that depending on what person's business is, where they're at in the business is what the important metric is. My experience for most people though is, and this is why the whole, I suppose the whole formula for today uh, has been about list building because it's the thing that people are screwing up left, right and center, right? We're doing all these great 
live videos and we're happily giving and we're doing clever tweets and we're doing Facebook posts and we're doing all this social media stuff and we're giving, 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 but we forget to get the email address or we don't want to get the email address because it's a psychological issue. It's crazy, right? Because you cannot sell. You need to... If Amazon and Apple... I say, how many emails a week do they send you? What? Amazon sends me one per day, at least. Do I mind getting that? No, because they're typically quite relevant and often they're getting me to buy more cool stuff. I don't have a problem with getting those Amazon emails. Joe and Jane Smith don't have problems getting those emails. It's when an email is irrelevant to you, right? It's all whiskers and no cheese, to, to quote Dean Jackson. That's where it becomes a problem. So that, that's where it becomes an issue. Uh, Gene asks, can I create a product page that people buy directly from on Market Pro Max? You bet your sweet patookie. It's called Value Pages. Um, so if you're in Market Pro Max, you look at the Value Pages section and you can create that and hook them up to Stripe and PayPal and all those cool sorts of things. So you absolutely can do this. Um <laughs> Got some comments about the video that was playing. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so I think we're almost done there. Let's answer. Yeah, we've got one. Let's have one more here. Uh, Al says, having a website does not seem to work as much as it used to. Is it true that one page funnel used to be like a squeeze or landing page is now dominating most of the sales on the net? Thanks so much for your helping hand. Uh the answer to that is yes. And it's a big part, like, as I answered the question before, you know, you don't, shouldn't have to stress about building an entire website. You can create a Tumblr blog for creating a blog. You can create an opt-in page using any one of a number of services. They'll host it for you. And you create the opt-in page, right? And you build it because that's the important thing. It's much better to be directly communicating people through email because, like I said, just who surfs the web anymore, right? Who surfs the web anymore? Nobody surfs the web anymore. Um, that's why a big focus for us is apps because actually more people are interacting on their mobile phones than any other platform now. And so apps are the natural place to do that. So, you know, we want to use apps to collect email. And you've seen examples of us doing that. So you're absolutely right. You know, websites, are, um, you know, they are definitely heading south, you know, at a rapid rate. Uh, you know, you look at the stats, 95% of people access Facebook on a mobile phone now. So if Joe and Jane Smith are accessing Facebook on a mobile, we need to start thinking mobile first for our presences, for our, you know, our websites, our everything. You know, how does it look on mobile? How does it work on mobile? Um, you know, it's absolutely a key element for what we're doing. All right. Woof. Big show today. I hope you found that useful. Uh, love to, to hear from you and, uh, get your feedback. Uh, again, if you, are you know, if you want to leave a question, you can at any time, uh, live.eddale.co so if you happen to be a podcast uh, listener and you want to ask me a question you can ask you can just pop over to live.eddale.co remember the challenge is now live and it's available to you at challenge.co it is completely free and it will take you through all the basics of understanding your market choosing your market getting pains gains and jobs to be done building your first funnel that's what it's all about and it is completely and utterly free. It's fresh. It is up to date. Uh, it's got the latest, latest information and it's available right now. So with that, I hope you have a great week wherever you are and uh, we will see you again. Same bat time, same bat channel. We are live at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern uh, US on a Sunday night. That's 7 p.m. Pacific on a Sunday night in the United States. And of course, that's 12 midday on the East Coast of Australia. So with that, bless you all. Have fun. And again, I will figure out how to subtly turn all of this stuff off. All right, with that, see you later, gang. Bye for now.